Oh my gosh! Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. You, right there. Welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're attempting to make transparent bread. Yeah, you heard that right, transparent bread. But this isn't new to me. I've done some uh, transparent videos. In fact, there's a playlist. We've done uh, clear crisps. <laughs> Uh, we've done clear tacos. I can't believe we've done it and some other bits and bobs. But for me, this is actually like a whole trend that's come in. A gastronomy expert guy, which we'll just talk about in a moment, has just launched this thing. A lot of you guys tag me in it saying, Barry, can you try it? And of course, of course, I will valiantly try and attempt this thing, um, which I mean, it's bread because you kind of bake it, but that's about it. But hopefully it will make sense as we get going. A little bit of housekeeping, actually. Uh, one, yesterday I bought the coolest water bottle in the world. I'll be taking that to football. Went to a shop last night and I got this pan. Uh, this is a silicon loaf pan. So this is what we need to make them. They're gonna be nice little loaves of clear uh, bread, hopefully. I think it's best if I summarize it from this article that a lot of you tagged me in. Uh, this is actually an invention by somebody called Albert Adria, um, who is known for wondrous, surprising and delicious creations. He's a Spanish chef who, uh, who has a brother called Ferran. Not essential, but hey ho. The latest creation is crystal clear bread, which is perfectly crisp and hollow and is made using water, potato starch, and something called kuzu, which is a starch and gelling agent made from the kuzu root. But I think kuzu is also arrowroot. How do I know that? Well, because I've got some potato starch and I ordered uh, online uh, some, well, if anyone can translate that. But on the back, it basically does say arrowroot starch. So it's starch. The bread is brushed towards the end with sunflower oil, which was probably the easiest ingredient to get, and topped with a sour cream Iberico ham and topped with black truffle. Absolute disclaimer though, if we do get this to work, I am not putting truffle on there. I went to two supermarkets last night, two of the more uh, upper class ones that I would expect to get truffle. And even asking people there, they just took me to the chocolate truffles, which was very nice, a nice diversion. Couldn't get it, but I have got a couple of alternatives to at least visually represent the fungi. We also need potato starch, as you've seen, and some rice flour, but the first ingredient is 650 grams of water, which part of me just thinks, is that 650 mil? I'm not sure, so I'm actually gonna weigh water. 500 mil of water, and I'm hoping it's gonna be 500 grams. Oh, it's just under. This is painful, I'm sure it doesn't matter too much. Oh, right, in this bag, I've got potato starch, which doesn't smell of potatoes. It does make me think, are we making bread or are we potentially making a transparent baked potato? The cooked starch's typical characteristics are of a neutral taste. So basically it, it tastes of nothing. All right, so we know the potato starch uh, and rice flour, as I say, easy to get. And actually some of my family members use that as a genuine alternative for when they're baking cakes and stuff. So uh, really nice. It's actually just uh, actually white and brown rice that uh, whizzed up. But the kuzu powder is a starch powder made from the root of the kudzu plant. So maybe arrowroot. It is used in traditional East Asian cuisine, mainly for thickening sauces and making various types of desserts. So why didn't we just use corn flour or corn starch? Right, big old pan. This is what we do, folks. We take our water. And we add in all of those ingredients. That does not look very clear to me, folks. <laughs> Clearly it's not clear. So we are gonna take it onto our hot. And I'm gonna start to whisk it continuously until it hits a boil. And I'm praying that as this warms up, I'm literally, please, I'm willing this to go clear as it boils. Uh, right now, I'm feeling like this is gonna be one of those videos that goes on for blooming days. I'm prepared for it. But also, stranger things can happen in cooking, folks. Been running up that hill, making some transparent bread. All right, here we go, that is boiling. I'm just gonna reduce the heat down. We wanna keep it on that steady boil for like two minutes now, whisking it constantly, just to keep it over the heat a little bit longer. <sighs> Pour that in, oh my gosh. Yeah, this is like a big jug of lard. Um, it has gone a bit lighter, right? It's gone, am I, am I just clutching it? I'm, I'm literally clutching it straws, yeah. Uh, the only way I'll know is if, well, I give it a go and apparently we fill the molds two thirds of the way up. But unfortunately with how long it goes in the oven for, like it's gonna take me quite a while to find out if it's gonna work or not. 
goes in for 90 minutes for the first bake, okay? For the first bake. So I have literally an hour and a half now of going, oh my gosh, is it even worth me getting the toppings ready? It's not because then you have another bake. And even so right now, it doesn't look clear at all. So by the time that's all done, I might be able to have another go this afternoon, but then it could go into, I really hope it doesn't become one of those multiple day ones. Come on, let's get some transparency. A good motto in life, perhaps. All right guys, so just a little bit of an update. I've kind of, I've got some of my second coffee. Um, we are about 20 minutes left to go. Uh, and I think what's basically happened is the moisture is slowly evaporating out of it. And we've got a really random selection of like puffy, rocky looking mini loaves and some are bursting, it's bubbling away a little bit. I really, I, I can't tell if it's still like murky or if it's transparent. And to be honest, some of the reviews I got, it doesn't actually have to be completely crystal clear. But the positive thing, and the reason why it's being called bread, is that it apparently tastes of bread, uh, which is remarkable if true. It's, it smells of plastic. That's the only other thing to say. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you can see in there. Um, the best way to describe it is it's a little bit like a load of balloons. I'm gonna take this timer off, lower it. Let's just do that right now. And it has another 45 minutes. But it's effectively bubbling up like a balloon, filling with air, forming a crust, and it looks amazing. And all of a sudden it just goes poof. And then I look and it's rising again. So I have no idea what's gonna happen. I guess we're just gonna sort of slowly try and dry these out to form that crust and hope that it holds. I, I, I generally, I can't touch it. I don't wanna open the oven because it will deflate. So I'm kind of stuck. Let's just hope. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Can you see that? They are. There is way more transparent and it's crystallized. I can hear cracking though. Oh, please don't deflate. I don't think it's going to. I think it's just the sudden drop in temperature. So I'll let it cool down a little bit longer before we get them out of there and then brush them in the oil. That has turned out way better than I thought it would. Folks, I just tried to get it out and look at that, that gummy base. The first one started all right. It doesn't look too bad, but look. <laughs> and that is the best of them. Like, look, they've all just, I sort of line them up. And to be fair, even if I try it again, which I'm gonna do, that's the end of this sentence, really. <laughs> I've got to make them at least It tastes like bread. But I want them to look more like bread. I don't mind if they sag a little bit, but I want them to like at least hold their shape and not be, look. Oh, that one's held its shape, but it just looks weird. Half of the mixture is still stuck on the bottom. Look, it's still gummy. Oh. So what this means to me, although I've just made the porcini mixture, which I was gonna use as an alternative to my truffle because I'm such a fun guy and it is still a fun guy. God, that blooming stinks. E, fungi. So uh, that is gonna have to stay overnight. But I'll drain it off. Might have a risotto for tea. I'll keep the porcini because that is what I was gonna top it with. Uh, so uh, tonight I will make some more, exactly the same method, and hopefully we'll jump to a scene. I'll just bake it a little longer with a non-fan oven, and hopefully it will come out without like ripping off its top. Do you know why I think it got a soggy bottom? Remember, I baked it but I put it on this tray as well. So maybe the heat from the oven was hitting the bottom of the tray and not really catching underneath this. And I've just put it in the oven and it would hold it. So I will do it again without the tray underneath and a non-fan oven. So preheating it old school style, no fan pushing the air around to perhaps burst the rise. And I'll probably add another 20 minutes, but I'll let you know tomorrow. I don't mind it in the end because it normally works out all, all right, but right now, whenever these videos go over a few days, I'm like, oh, is this gonna work? What am I doing? Like, just do a video of a fruit salad, Barry. Life would be much easier. <laughs> all right, folks, the alarm has just gone off. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. They've all failed. They've all failed. That has completely, completely failed entirely. I'm gonna try again tomorrow. 
And when I go to bed tonight, I am going to be thinking, do I do the fan oven? Do I just do the standard? I, definitely fan oven. But did it crack because it wasn't the fan oven or because it wasn't on a tray? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I will see you in the morning. Look at that. That is so bad. I hate it when this happens. Good morning, folks. Um, oh my gosh. So there's actually an alternative recipe. Uh, so in the original one, this is the original mix here we've made. I've done another one. So this is potato starch, uh, 20 grams of that, then 10 grams of the kuzu and 10 grams of rice flour. This one omits the rice flour, which I'm not sure will actually make it stronger because uh, flour, obviously, once you cook it, you know, it does get fairly strong, but then the kuzu is doubled. So where you lose 10 grams of the rice flour, this is just potato starch and the kuzu. Oh, the other thing to say is the recipe did actually specify using still mineral water, so I've done that as well. So yeah, not the most exciting scene. You've seen me do this before. I've just sort of boiled them up and I'm gonna get them into the molds right now. But there's actually, uh, excuse the pun, <laughs> clear difference here between that that is almost transparent already. So we will try both. Oh my gosh, there is a massive difference between those. And you probably don't even need me to point out, well, I will need to remember this, which is why I'm <laughs> doing it. Like an L shape of the one where there is no rice flour. So we will see you in 90 minutes. Fan oven again, directly on the shelf this time and less in the mold. Folks, it's not going well. Uh, we are 70 minutes into the 90 minute bake. For the first hour, um, it's actually only one side. The, the new mix has been brilliant, but the other one that I've been using has been rubbish. It's, it's still deflated, I can see it in there. The other ones, after about 70 minutes where we're at now, they were puffed up and then they started like cracking and just going meh, which is really disappointing. But however, there is one that I'm pinning my hopes on right in the middle. Otherwise, I would just stop right now. In the words of the Spice Girls, thank you very much. Uh, I have got, look at it. <laughs> That's our wallpaper paste. Now it's cooled down. Look at that. And then obviously we've got the clear one that we're using. This one, my plan is, I think, if I have to do it again, I'm going to bake it just to get that rise and then turn the oven lower immediately to really slowly dry it out. But obviously there's a lot less moisture in there now using a lot less mix. So I really don't know what to do. So I think if this one in the middle doesn't work, there's actually two possible ones. The rest, I can't understand it. They're so flat, but I, I can't touch it. I can't get it out. I can't move it around because it will deflate it all. And I, I've got to wait another 50 minutes at least. So I'll just keep you posted. This is absolutely taking me down routes I never thought I would be. Folks, it is time to get it out of the oven. My initial thoughts are if I've got one that's worked, I'm done. If it fails, because I've got to still get it out. Oh my gosh, I've still got to get it out. We'll go again. We'll go again. Oh wow, I thought I had one that had worked. Oh, I've got one. I think I've got one. I've got one. Look at that. In fact, I might have two, but before, I just, I don't want to break it. Where, where do I put it? Ah, Mrs. B, look at that. <gasps> look. You've got one. I've got one, but I need to show. Oh, I think I might have two. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's a little lower. <laughs> it's like a boat. But this is the mixture that doesn't have the rice flour in it. I'm gonna take that. I would. Yeah. I don't need to do it anymore. I'm more worried about the energy bill for the blooming oven. <laughs> but I need to show you, there's a couple that have failed. Like, look at this one, for example. This is more like the territory I was at last night. It just, the, the, the tops just kind of like dissolved on themselves. But like, if I compare the color of that with maybe the best one, this is the best one, isn't it, of the, look at the height difference. And this has got like a more golden color to it. Yeah. I think that's the flour where it's baked, you know? And that lip, Ooh! I've now got to brush these in sunflower oil and bake it again. That's what scares me. And if we really like the taste of it, I can make some more. You're all right, thanks. <laughs> all right, folks, so uh, just because I want to have a taste test at the end, some of the rice flour ones that have pretty much failed will stay there. And I have a massive doubt that I'm going to do this and it's going to dissolve it, but we'll go with it, okay? So I'm going to lightly brush the sunflower oil on top. Now, I don't know if this is going to give it a little bit of colour or maybe a little bit of flavour because it is supposed to taste like bread and those failed ones I did yesterday, which for reference look absolutely horrendous now. Look, <laughs> I think it's something that you need to eat almost immediately. 
they did taste a little bit like bread. But I think sometimes anything can. You know, there's that classic thing that people go, oh yeah, it just tastes like chicken. And someone says that in your mind, you go and eat something different. Like I, I tried an alligator and it's like, yeah, it tastes like chicken. To me, it didn't taste like chicken. It tasted like, well, it tasted like chicken, but it tasted like lobster mixed with chicken, if that makes sense. If these tasted chicken, then the world is wrong. It's been a very, very weird 24 hours for me, folks. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but hopefully this is all gonna be worth it. All right, in they go for 10 minutes, apparently. Nice hot oven again. I really hope doing this is not gonna make the oil just all like perish and just break it and flake off. Oh my gosh. I put a couple of the token broken ones in there because I might as well. Uh, so we'll see what it turns out in 10 minutes. Well, there we are, Mrs. B. They look cool, it's like mini loaves of bread. Well, they are, but like it's not really done anything. Maybe it's added a little bit of flavor or something, I don't know. So there was a couple of different versions around this. So obviously, instead of getting truffle, have you ever had truffle? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's no? quite mushroom. It's quite rich, it's, isn't it? It's Maybe. a fungi. A fungi. See what she did there, Boston? And there was a, a few different versions. There was one where there was like an Iberico ham infused sour cream, but someone else did the ham and then sour cream separate, which is what I'm gonna do because basically it seems a lot cheaper. Okay. Okay, so what we do is we take a strip of the ham, but I guess this kind of becomes a bit of a, a grip for our fake truffle. And you're gonna want one just like that, right? But I wanna put some of the truffle on there. So we do this, but that is it. Wow. <laughs> It just looks like it's floating. But I'll do one without the uh, mushrooms on, yeah? All right, yes, please. Can we just remind ourselves where we were? Uh, <laughs> this is honest, folks. 24 hours ago, we had this, and Mrs. B actually, I'm not sure if I captured that on camera. You're like, no, I think that's fine. That is see through. <laughs> and I was like, I've got to do it. I've got to, I've got yeah. to keep going. And I am so happy that we persisted. Um, so what I've got, we've got the ones that we've uh, flavored, but behind it, we've got the rice flour version, which is slightly yellowy. Uh, and then obviously the standard ones uh, with the extra kuzu. <laughs> all right, Mrs. B, let's start with uh, the rice one, first of all. So the slightly okay. yellower one. So this is uh, 10 grams of kuzu, 10 grams of uh, rice flour, and 20 grams of potato starch, right? Mm. Nice crunch. Oh, reminds me of um, popcorn. It does taste like popcorn, doesn't it? Yeah. Or a rice cake. Yeah. It's got a good crunch on it, though. It has a really good crunch, doesn't mm -hmm. it? So this one is 20 grams kuzu, 20 grams potato starch, and no rice flour, which is what we've got on here. So okay. let's just try it plain. It hasn't got this strong taste like the other one. Doesn't taste of bread, does it? Doesn't taste of anything. The ones yesterday tasted more of bread than this. That, all I can taste is like water. Mmm. It's all like I'm drinking water. That's really bizarre. It's like eating water. And also quite oily. Mmm. These are the ones from yesterday. Like, this tasted more like bread to me. I wonder if it's because it was really baked. Oh no, they've gone really gooey. They've gone funny. I can eat those. Right, okay, hopefully this should be a taste explosion in your mouth. There is a slight baked rice cake vibe to it, very slightly, but the rice flour one much more. And all I can taste is the ham and the sour cream. Yeah. <laughs> That's bizarre. Do you know what? It just needs it. I think whatever you put on that, it's like just playing the role of like a cracker, mm. isn't it? It could have been anything on there. The ham was actually really nice and the sour cream and I like porcini, so that's fine. It's bizarre. It, <laughs> that's all I can say. It, it's really strange. It is bizarre. I kind of really tempted. I've got a silicon mold with a PlayStation controller. Like that. I've got the, remember the video game controllers we did and the Star Wars one? But you no, know, right now, it doesn't That's matter. Right. It's just gonna shatter and fall apart. Yeah. <sighs> Would you eat it again? No. So folks, I have got a transparent, clear recipe playlist. Of course I do. Um, and I think out of all of them, this might be one of the hardest ones for the, like, the least reward. Some of them were tricky, like the lemon meringue pie is worth it. Amazing suggestion. Thank you for a lot of you guys that sent me the link to this. I will make some more transparent ones, but um, this just felt like baked starch. Really quirky, and you could see why they would charge money for it, because people would be like, oh yes, I went to this restaurant and paid hundred pounds for it. But just grab a cracker out of your larder. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Remember to subscribe if you're not already, and if you are, make sure your notifications are turned on, and sometimes YouTube aren't even telling you if your notifications are turned on, so follow me on social media as well. Apparently that's a thing now, so I, I do tell everyone everywhere when I put a video up, so much appreciated. Any video ideas, do let me know down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.
the PlayStation controller. I mean, that one stands out pretty darn well, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you know what, out of this entire video, um, that was my favourite thing, just to see it like that. Ah. Oh.